Hi folks, Rito here and welcome back. Today I'm going to review my Celestron Edge HD 8-inch telescope because I just realized I have been using this telescope for almost five years now. So in this video I just want to reiterate why I bought this telescope in the first place and I'm going to share some useful tips to capture the moon, the planets and some deep sky objects using the Celestron Edge HD. And if you stick around until the end of the video, I will share my latest attempt and share some practical tips on how to capture galaxies using this telescope. Let's get started. Since we are in galaxy season right now, I've mounted my Edge HD on my new AM5 and telescope mount and paired it with my ASI 2600MC Air smart camera to capture two iconic spring galaxies. M51, the Whirlpool galaxy in Canis Venatici, and M101, the pinwheel galaxy in Ursa Major. Both are about 20 to 25 million light years away, but before we dive into that, let me first tell you why I bought the Edge HD nearly five years ago. And you can find links in the video description below to reliable retailers who sell the Edge HD across the USA, Europe, and worldwide. So let's rewind to when I first got this telescope nearly five years ago. I wanted something versatile telescope that could handle the moon, the planets, but also let me dive into deep sky astrophotography without needing multiple telescopes. And the Celestron Edge HD 8-inch seemed to take all the boxes for me. First of all, the 8-inch or 200mm aperture collected way more light than my typical 3-4-inch APO refractor telescopes I owned back then. Capturing more light means capturing more details. Whether you want to capture faint galaxies, planetary surface features, or crisp lunar landscapes. Additionally, the 2000mm focal length is excellent for achieving enough magnification to image the planets in our solar system. Second, the telescope is relatively compact at just under 24cm tube length and pretty lightweight at 6.3kg, so you can easily mount this telescope on any beginner or intermediate telescope mount. For example, I've used my Skywatcher EQ6 Off-Pro in the past and I'm using my ZWO AM5N telescope mount right now. I do recommend getting a telescope mount that can track at sub-arc second accuracy with guiding when you want to use this telescope for deep sky imaging. What really sealed the deal for me back then was the flat field imaging. Unlike standard SCTs, the Edge HD gives you sharp stars all the way to the corners. That's a big deal, especially when using large sensor astro cameras. Right now, I've paired it with an APS-C size format camera sensor. To be honest, that might be a bit too large for the 8-inch, but let's see what happens when I'm going to capture these galaxies. Folks, smart telescopes are everywhere nowadays, and to be honest, I reviewed quite a few of those smart telescopes on my astrophotography channel, so <laughs> I guess I contributed a little bit to that hype. But let's face it, some of them are also really expensive, so in this video I just wanted to emphasize that it is not so difficult to turn telescopes like the Edge HD into a smart telescope too. Just put your telescope on a good quality go-to equatorial mount, uh, add your DSLR camera or an astrophotography camera and hook everything up to a PC or a laptop with some free astrophotography software or alternatively you can use devices like the ASI Air Plus or buy a smart astrophotography camera and you have this very high-end astrophotography setup that I would call smart that could outperform most if not all of these other expensive smart telescopes that are available on the astrophotography market today. Something to think about, right? The Edge HD 8-inch is a great telescope for lunar and planetary imaging in my opinion. With its 2000mm focal length and solid 8-inch aperture, it gave me enough resolution and contrast to capture details like Saturn's rings, Jupiter's storms and the Great Red Spot, surface features on Mars and the rugged terrain of the Moon over the years. Let me share a few beginner tips for lunar and planetary imaging. I always use high-speed planetary cameras and record short videos of the moon or the planets using free capturing software like SharpCap or FireCapture. 
Then I stack the best quality frames of a video using free software tools like AutoStackert and process it further in Registax or WaveSharp to get that sharp, detailed final image. Always keep your video exposure short by adding some gain to beat the atmospheric turbulence and make sure your telescope has cooled down before you start imaging. Of course, it's also important to check your collimation. I'm happy to say that my Edge HD was well collimated right out of the box and I've only needed to make minor adjustments over the past 5 years. If you want more info, I have a 3 hour planetary imaging course for those who join my channel which you can do by clicking on the join button below this video. You can also support me by just subscribing to my channel or in other ways as mentioned in the video description below. Thanks so much to all the folks who supported me over the years as this really helps me to keep on creating content about astrophotography. Now, let me emphasize that Celestron also offers larger versions of this telescope being the 9 and a quarter inch, the 11 inch and even the 14 inch Edge HD. These telescopes definitely outperform the 8 inch, especially on the moon and the planets, but they are also heavier and a lot more expensive. For many astrophotographers like me, the 8 inch hits a really sweet spot between performance, price and portability. The Edge HD 8 inch is also fantastic for imaging deep sky objects in our Milky Way at a large focal length. With a mono camera and an electronic filter wheel attached, I've captured some stunning images of the night sky with this telescope, like the fillers of creation in the Eagle Nebula, globular star clusters like M13 and the Pac-Man Nebula, which even got me an astronomy picture of the day award at NASA a few years back. So here are a couple of tips for deep sky imaging with this telescope. My first tip would be to add the Celestron 0.7 reducer for deep sky imaging with this telescope. It reduces the focal length to 1400 mm and speeds up the telescope to f7. This makes it easier to fit large objects like nebulae into your field of view and lets you collect light faster compared to the native f10, meaning you'll need less exposure time to capture deep sky objects. The back focus on the Celestron 0.7 reducer for the Edge HD 8 inch is 105 mm. This is the distance from the rear of the reducer to the camera sensor. So the second tip is a bit personal and out of the ordinary. For guiding, I do stick to a small 200 mm focal length guide scope and a guide camera. In my experience, you don't really need off-axis guiding or a huge guide scope with this Edge HD 8 inch telescope. This lightweight setup has allowed me to take consistent 3 to 5 minute exposures of deep sky objects. I recently saw an excellent YouTube video of Pat on his Heavenly Backyard channel who shared a similar experience where he used a small StarSense auto guider on his large Edge HD 11 inch getting good guiding results, so definitely check that out. Moreover, the ASI 2600 MC Air I'm using right now for capturing galaxies has a built-in guide sensor. but. Finding a guide star at this focal length can be really tricky. So I stuck to using my shorter focal length guide scope, which works perfectly fine, especially with multi-star guiding being available in the ASI Air app or free guiding software tools like PHD2. So we have been enjoying these amazing clear skies in early April 2025 in the Netherlands. So let me share my latest attempts and let me share some practical tips on how to capture galaxies with the Edge HD 8 inch telescope. Let's go! So thanks so much for sticking around and as promised, let me share some details on my latest attempt to capture the Whirlpool and Pinwheel galaxies. For imaging galaxies, you need clear nights under a new moon. Galaxies are broadband targets, meaning they emit light across the entire visible light spectrum, so you don't want the moon messing up the view. Also, little to no light pollution is preferred, but I've been imaging galaxies from my Vortal 7 city light polluted skies over the past couple of years, which is also definitely possible. So, I used a very simple setup this time by pairing my Edge HD with my ASI 2600MC Air color camera and an additional 200mm guide scope. 
What made it easy was that this smart camera has an ASI Air built in to control the mount, the imaging camera and the guide camera wirelessly using the ASI Air app. One of the easiest ways to capture galaxies is to use a color camera like I did this time. For the highest quality pictures, however, I would recommend using a mono camera with additional LRGV filters like I did in the past. You can also use an additional HA narrowband filter to bring out active star forming regions within each galaxy. I didn't do that in the images I'm about to show you. Don't forget to add a UVIR cut filter when imaging galaxies with a color camera. Most color cameras have such a filter built in, but do check as you want to avoid purple halos and bloated stars in your picture. I was a bit experimenting this time and what you might find interesting is that I captured the galaxies using the native 2000mm focal length at f10, so that's without the reducer. I varied the exposure times to 1, 3 and 5 minute exposures, totaling about 5 hours for each galaxy. I used a combination of shorter and longer exposures as the shorter exposures tend to capture sharp photos of the core of the galaxy, whereas longer exposure photos capture the faint outer spiral arms of that same galaxy. I used the native focal length this time because over the years I figured that many galaxies are so bright you can actually capture them quite nicely even when using the native focal length and f ratio of the Edge HD. As mentioned before, I use my 200mm focal length guide scope for guiding as it can be tough to find good guide stars at the native 2000mm focal length. And of course, I always take flat frames after each night of imaging, but I don't add dark frames anymore with my IMX571 sensor as it produces very little noise when I cool the sensor down to minus 15 degrees Celsius. I stacked and processed both images using TixInsight, which in my opinion is still the best processing tool for deep sky astrophotos. So by now it should be clear why I never sold my Edge HD 8 inch telescope. It has been an amazing telescope for both the moon, planetary and deep sky imaging and after 5 years I'm still loving it. Now let's take a look at the final images of the Whirlpool and Pinwheel galaxies I captured with the Edge HD 8 inch. Thanks again for sticking with me, subscribe or join the channel if you like my content and I wish you all clear skies.